Hi guys! Um, I'm starting a little bit backwards today with my finished page in my Life Crafted album because I want to show you how I edited this digital printable page from Citrus Twist. Um, not everyone has access to Photoshop, I'm well aware of that, um, but I did want to show you that there are alternatives when working with digital files and I'm going to show you one way to do that today. So I know not everybody has Photoshop, not everybody um, wants to pay for Photoshop or feels like they have the skills for Photoshop um, and there are a lot of free options um, for using digital printables out there and the one that I want to show you today is using the Silhouette Studio software. Now you do not have to have a Silhouette to use their um, software to use Silhouette Studio. So I will leave the link um, in the description box and just download the software that's going to suit your operating system on your computer. Um, the basic edition of the software is free, that's all I use, so I don't, you can pay for designer editions, but I just use the basic one, um, it's totally free, and I want to show you today how I did just a few simple alterations to my digital printable to use it in my spread. So the first thing I've done is opened a new document in Silhouette Studio and I've made my media size A4 because that's the size of the paper that I'm going to be printing on. You can alter that, you can change that to whatever size paper that you might be printing on yourself. It might be letter size. I'm going to use A4 and then I want to use, um, I'm going to grab this PNG file for the Citrus Twist Night and Day Traveler's Notebook basics pages and I'm going to use number four and I'm just going to drag that on to my Silhouette Studio software. So the great thing about this is if all you want to do is print the printable you can go ahead and print that from here it's not an issue um, if you have um, don't know how to print printables this is a great way of doing it you can add more than one onto a page to make sure you're getting um, you know value for money when you're printing. Um, what I want to do today though is just a few really basic alterations to this page so that I can use it in my album. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see this a little bit more clearly. The first thing that I want to do is I want to remove the words that say morning, afternoon and night because this is not how I'm going to use uh, this printable. Um, I just want to remove those little words and there's a couple of ways to do it. The quickest way is probably just to use the eraser tool and just erase it over the words. But you can see it does leave a hole in the PNG file. This is not my favorite way to alter things like that. So I'm just gonna undo that and show you that probably the best way that I think is to use the marquee tool and just draw a rectangle. So I am gonna draw a rectangle over the word and you can see it did nothing. That's because it's clear. So I'm gonna go up here to the fill and I'm gonna choose white because that's the color of my background. Now say if this um, wasn't a white background, if it was, let's say it's this pink coral color up here, if the whole page was that pink coral, you just go into the fill and use the eyedropper tool and just put it over that color and click on that and that would color that so you can see if I put it up here, it's gonna be the exact same color as whatever the background was. I, however, just need it to be white. So I'm going to do that a couple of times more just to do these other little words. You can see how really quick and simple it is just to cover up little basic details like that. And that's those words removed so I don't need those anymore. The other thing that I can do now is add some digital journaling. If you're like me and don't really love your handwriting and you want to put your um, journaling in here um, digitally, you can do that here as well. I'm just going to go to the text tool and I'm going to click just up here. Now I can see this is going to be way too big <laughs> for what I want, so I'm going to change the font. I'm going to go up here and use Remington Noiseless because that's a really good typewriter font and I like having my um, journaling look type um, typed so you can do whatever font you have up there. And I'm going to pick something much smaller I'm going to try let's say 11. And then I'm just going to type out my journaling. So to type out your journaling I just want to make sure I click back here onto my little text tool and then just go ahead and type.
Now, obviously, there's a few things wrong here. The first is that my typing is all in one line. So I'm just going to go back in and click where I want the line breaks to be and just hit return. And the other thing is, is this journaling is totally clear. So I want to select all of that and then go up here and change the color. I want it to be black. And I'm also going to have no line around the outside of it, just so it's easier to see. The other thing I like to do is go over here to your text options and just adjust the line spacing. Because I've got lines in the background here, it, it's going to look best if the, the lines of my journaling fit those lines. But there's other ways around that, of course. You could always uh, create another little square and cover up those lines. When something's in the front here, you can just right click it and send it backwards. And that brings my text back up to the front. And you can see the, these red lines won't actually print, but if you don't want to see them, you can get rid of it like that. And now it looks like I have journaling. What I want to do though, is show you how you can adjust, um, adjust these lines even further. Obviously I'm at the maximum there is up here and it still doesn't fit. Um, so I need to try something else. But before I do that, I'm just going to copy this text box and I'm going to paste another one so that I don't have to keep doing this again and again and again. I'm going to paste three of these text boxes so I can do all three of my journalings. This one, obviously, I've already done. So what I want to do is just show you how you can change these lines. I'm just going to click on my Modify palette, and I want to detach the lines. You do want to make sure that your journaling is exactly right before you do that, because there is no going back from here. We've now changed it from text into little outlines. I'm just going to drag over the bottom line and then I've also selected this um, background. So I want to hold down the shift key and deselect that and then command G to group it. And I'm going to do that for all three lines. And I'm going to make sure that each line is a separate group. And then when I zoom in here, I can move each line individually so that it sits on top of the lines that are part of the digital printable. And then everything is spaced really nicely. So I'm going to do the same thing for my other two lots of journaling. I'm just going to double click on here and that gets me back in to be able to edit the text. I'm going to select all of that redo my journaling, detach the lines, and adjust each of the lines of my text. And I also want to fill in the date here. So I'm going to just do this exact same thing. I just pasted another text box and I'm going to put in the date. And I'm going to put today's date because I'll be honest, those photos were all from different days. So I'm going to put in the date that I was editing this rather than the date that I took all the photos. And I think the other fun thing that I might want to do is I might want to change this text. So I'm going to use the same peach that's at the top and I've already selected that but if I hadn't again you can just make sure the text is selected. Let me zoom out so you can see. I've got my text selected here and I'm just going to go in here grab the eyedropper tool and drop that on the peach and that gives me my little peach date. Now, if you want to do everything digitally, you can also add your photos in digitally too. So I'm going to grab the three photos that I want to print here. 
and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just dragging them up onto the Silhouette Studio. Obviously they're all a little bit large so I'm going to select all three of them and I'm just going to arrange them so that they're all in one square and then I want to um, change the size of these. I'm going to make them about two inches. Two inches wide, two inches high and let's see if they fit in here. And they fit not too badly. Let me change the lines on here so you can see what the whole page is going to look like. And that's my altered digital page and I can go ahead and print that and just pop that straight into my album. Now one other thing that I did want to show you that you can do in um, the Silhouette Studio software here is to crop photos. So I'm going to use the other, the full page photo that I want to create for my album. And obviously this one is a lot too large. I'm going to zoom out so I can resize this a little bit to make it more workable. When you're resizing photos, you always want to hold down the shift key so that it changes in proportion. Otherwise you're going to end up with a funny looking photo. But now that I've got it sort of roughly the size that I want, I'm going to use the marquee tool again and create a rectangle. It doesn't matter what size this is because I'm going to adjust it up here. I want it to be five inches by eight and a quarter. So this is going to be a full page in my Life Crafted album. And then I'm just going to move that uh, rectangle so it's over my photo and then just adjust the photo again so that it's roughly in the right place. So where the rectangle is is where my photo is going to crop to. Once I've got it in place I'm going to drag my cursor over top of that and select both the rectangle and my photo. And then in this modify palette again I just want to go crop. And that crops my photo super easily to five inches by eight and a quarter and I can go ahead and print that as well. So that's my two pieces done. I actually think that I am going to print these little square photos on photo paper and I'm going to print my digital printable on some matte paper and then that's where I'm up to. So I'll show you how I finish off the page. So I've printed out my photos and I've printed out the printable and I've trimmed out my larger photo and all I have to do now is just trim down the printable. I'm just eyeballing it um, and then using my uh, trimmer there to make sure it's five by eight and a quarter. And so these are the two pages of my spread. Now I have this cardboard template that I made for myself so that I know where to punch the holes or you could use a six hole hole punch or even just hold up a page protector so that you can get the alignment of those holes perfect on your two pages. Now I did trim down those photos. I printed those on photo paper but you can see how much time you would save yourself if you just printed that all out in one go. I'm eyeballing again where to line up those photos which you would not have to do if you printed that digitally. The only reason I printed those on photo paper was just to have that tiny bit of textural difference between the, the glossy photo paper and the matte of the printable. Now there's very little else to do on this page. You could totally leave it plain, um, but I am going to add just a couple of little embellishments from the night and day pack. Um, one of these little chipboard arrows is really pretty. It says bring on the day and I think it's a nice way to sort of end the page. Plus it ties in that little bit of teal from my cup at the top there. And I'm also going to add this little things wood veneer because it's really pretty and it makes a little cluster at the top and just kind of balances things out nicely. Now I feel like I haven't done a sequin page for a long time and when you've got a sequin mix like this one which is so perfect for this kind of coffee page I really had no choice and what I'm going to do is use one of these um, two by four um, page protectors and I'm going to fill each little pocket with just a tiny little bit of the sequin mix. And that way when I seal up these pockets with my fuse tool, I'm going to get the perfect distribution of sequin mix across the entire page. So if you use just a single page protector, um, they do all tend to sort of flop down to the bottom. Um, this is a great way to have those sequins evenly distributed. So I just fused up the top of each little pocket and that is my finished spread. 
totally quick, totally easy. You know I love digital printables and they really are not difficult to use. You do not have to have Photoshop at all. Do let me know if you've got any questions and I will leave all the links down below for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to keep watching, there are a couple more videos on screen. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye guys.